Welcome to this week's edition of the Comic Hero Show. I'm your host, Victor Nunley, and I am the Comic Hero. I have a lot to talk about this week. Um, Superman, the Hulk, Nelson Mandela, and the um, one-year anniversary of the Sandy Hook Elementary shootings. So without further ado, let the ranting begin. First up is the Hulk. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I told uh, most of you that the Hulk is now an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. That's right, he and Bruce Banner are agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Because they felt that Shield, that the Hulk was way too dangerous to handle stuff alone. So, they get set on a mission to clean up the mess that was made after Age of Ultron. With all the uh, time anomalies that, that kept um, happening. And they, um, they knew it was, well, Bruce Banner knew that it was going to be... Um, dangerous so he transferred his his conscious into an LMD or a life model decoy and both he and the Hulk go through time to um to make right of all the wrongs that that are happening and in the last issue of Indestructible Hulk which is number 14 at the very end of it they go back to where it all began in New Mexico where the Hulk was born at the Gamma Base site and um the Bruce Banner then stopped um, Rick Jones from from getting near the bomb as that as that was supposed to happen. However, it wasn't Bruce Banner who got irradiated by the by the gamma bomb. It was actually the Hulk himself, and now he's become an even more vicious, more savage, and more Neanderthalish version of himself. And it's kind of funny that you mention that. I mean, it's kind of funny I'm mentioning this. Because I just bought Incredible, I mean, in, Indestructible Hulk number fifteen, and I will, I will touch base with, um, uh, with, with you all a l little later on. Okay, next up is Superman. There was a, um, a story arc called Krypton Returns, and in this one, this villain named Hell, H apostrophe E L rather, he, um, he he believes that he he all he believes that he could change history that he could bring Krypton back from the dead, so that's what he did, and he he prevented the explosion of Krypton. However, it caused rifts in the time stream, and and it's causing all kinds of ruckus throughout the entire universe. And if nothing's done, if nothing's done about it, then the um. Then the entire universe will suffer the same fate as Krypton originally did. So this cosmic entity named the Oracle had summoned Superman, Superboy, and Supergirl and sent them through th uh, three different times in Krypton's history. Um, Superboy was sent to Supergirl's hometown of Argo City, Krypton, days before the planet exploded. Uh, Superman was sent to his hometown of Kryptonopolis Krypton months before it exploded and Supergirl was sent to the Valley of Wartros centuries before Krypton's explosion. Um, all three of them were successful. However, Superboy sacrificed his life in order to um, to fulfill his mission and he got Sup the Supergirl the past then and the rest of Argo City off of Krypton right before it exploded, as it was meant to be. But Superboy um, perished along with the rest of Krypton in the process. Now, with that being said, the um, the Superboy book will continue. However, it's not it's not going to um, star this Superboy that just um, that just died. Now you're probably you're probably wondering, Vic, explain. Oh, I will. Earlier in the pages of Teen Titans, of course, Superboy is a member of the Teen Titans. Um, the rest of them end up getting getting tossed into a, some kind of untied reality um, thanks to uh, one of the the members of the Crime Syndicate in Forever Evil, and. Um, it was during that time Superboy ended up 
fighting the guy, the person who he was, um, he was cloned from, which is John Kent, Superboy's, I mean, Superman's son from a, uh, from an alternate reality. And, um, somehow he got, and somehow he got mixed up with, um, with the rest of the Teen Titans, and they think that's, um, they think that's the clone, and, and not, uh, John Kent. As to how that's going to unfold, I, I really don't know. All right, to um, so some news of a much lighter note, I mean a much serious note rather. Um, last week, Nelson Mandela um, had died from complications from from a long time lung infection. Now, Nelson Mandela was one of the greatest men that ever walked this earth. Of course, he he. Um, he was a freedom fighter, and he ended up in jail. He ended up in prison for 27 years. He he was released in 1990, and one of the first things he did, he visited New York. And there was a lot of folks that were thrilled that um, he that he was that he was released. Not only because he was, I mean, they were thrilled not only because he was released, but because they were that he that they, he was in America, and. I can remember watching an old episode of Saturday Night Live that happened right after his release. Quincy Jones, who was the uh, who had hosted an episode of SNL that weekend, right after he came out um, at the beginning of the show, he conducted a a piece that that he had written for the Saturday Night Live band in tribute to Nelson Mandela. And of course, you know, Nelson Mandela became the first ever black president of South Africa in 1994. And he only, but believe it or not, he only served one term. But, you know, the man is, is truly a, he's truly a treasure. And, um, you know, this man lived to be 95. He lived a good full life. I mean, most folks don't even see, um. 80. But one thing's for sure, he was a giant among men, and he will sorely be missed. And to much more um, serious news, um, Saturday will be the one year anniversary of the um, Sandy Hook Elementary School shootings. Now, I remember where I was when I found out about that last year. I was playing the piano at a restaurant in Minden, Louisiana called the Timeless Cafe and Tea Room. And there were some folks talking about it, and it's just sad. I, I, I don't understand what would cause a person to want to go inside a school and just murder students and teachers alike. And it was for no reason. I mean, sure, yeah, the the guy's um, mother taught there, but there's still, it, it, it still no excuse for somebody to go in there and, and do something like that. It's getting to the point now where parents are scared to send their, their, um, their children to school, and, and there's a, and there's a huge, um, And student teaching is becoming more and more common now because of this. I mean, something has to be done. And I just hope this can all come to a conclusion to the point where none of this can happen again. And um, no more. And we and parents can be can rest assured that they can send their children to school again. I mean, I'm not a parent, I'm not a parent, but I just hope that one day I can be able to um, send my, ch my child to school without ha worrying about somebody coming in and, and taking their life. Okay, that's all the, um, all the ranting I have for this episode, so let's get to the comics I bought today. Up first is Superman number 23.3. This is a Villains Month um, book, and it features the origin of Hell. 
And I learned during uh, Krypton Returns that Hell is actually a creation of Superman's father, Jor-El. And I, I really want to find, I really want to find out more in detail about his, his origin and how he came to be. So that's why I bought it today. Up next is um, Superman Wonder Woman number three. And this one, General Zod um, shows up and he's, and you know he's after Superman. Or as he calls him, Son of Jor-El. Let's just hope Superman and Wonder Woman don't kneel before Zod. <laughs> Alright, up next is Green Lantern number 26. This is, um... This is the ramifications from the last issue. In the last issue, uh, Hal Jordan, who's, who's now leading the Green Lantern Corps, has decided that no one but Green Lanterns can wield their rings after what happened during the uh, Lights Out story arc. And they go, they go on this planet, and they try to catch her this um, Star Sapphire, but then she and, the, and all her country people decide to... Um, to beat up on Green, both uh, Hal Jordan and John Stewart, who went. I mean, well, Hal Jordan and um, Kilowog, who went down there, and right, and right now it's not looking good for either one of them. All right, up next is Red Lanterns number twenty-five. This is the first issue of Red Lanterns after the Lights Out story arc, and uh, I hate at first. Guy Gardner was um, was sent by Hal Jordan to um, to investigate. Um, the Red Lanterns and and pose as one of them but unfortunately for all Green Lantern fans out there Guy Gardner is now full-blown Red Lantern and he does not want to come back to the uh, Green Lantern Corps ever again all right next is Superboy number 26 this is the first issue of Superboy after the uh, after what I told you about earlier in um, Teen Titans and um, Krypton and the Krypton Return series that crossed over into three of the uh, Superman related books. And this time John Kent is um, is now, you know, he's now assumed the role of Superboy. However, he does not know about the uh, the the real I call him the real Superboy's death. So um, it'll be interesting how this is going to um, how this is going to go about in this book and in Teen Titans. And and one thing that I want to say about that is it's going to be kind of weird, you know, for when Superman finds out about this and then he finds out that he has a kid from a from an alternate reality and Lois Lane is is the mom yeah cuz that's going to really affect um, Superman and Wonder Woman's relationship that they're in right now although I think the relationship works but with this it's only a matter of time before before things start coming to a head up next is Green Lantern Corps number 26. And this one, <coughs> excuse me, uh, John Stewart and Hal Jordan duke it out to see who's going to be the new leader of the Green Lantern Corps because John, because Stewart doesn't really approve of some of the decisions that um, uh, Jordan makes. He, he believes that they're very irrational. So he's pretty much declared a, a duel. And that's going to be kind of weird. Uh, and that's, this, this is going to be a military-related fight, people, um, because Green it, because if you if you watched if you watched the Green Lantern movie, you know that Hal Jordan is is strictly is, is Air Force. But for for all the rest of you who the rest of you who have also been following John Stewart, whether you've been reading this book or watching Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, you know John Stewart is also a Marine, so. So this is this so this is going to be great. I, I I just I just hope this is going to be um, this fight is going to be is going to live up to the hype. 
Up next is Justice League of America number 10. This is a forever, uh, forever evil tie-in, and the members of the Justice League of America, that is the team that, that have been sent to, um, or put together to keep the Justice League out of, the Justice League out of trouble, they're going up against the crime syndicate after what happened to the Justice League, and and right now it's not looking good. I mean, right right now the the, the last two standing are Martian Manhunter and Stargirl, as you see on on the front cover. But we'll see how things pan out as as Forever Evil progresses. And right now, I'm telling you, I'm enjoying the series. I, I like the whole um, origin of Bizarro in in this one, of course. And, and they kind of stuck, even though it's, it's a different, you know, DC Comics is, you know, they're doing this new 52 thing. I like how they stuck to uh, crediting Lex Luthor to uh, creating Bizarro as a way of um, sticking it to Superman. But, but we'll see what happens. And speaking of Justice League related things... Up next is Justice League number 25. This is also a Forever Evil tie-in, and this time Nightwing. Uh, um, Nightwing is pretty much the, the person in this book right now because, as I, as I said before, all the Justice Leaguers, that is Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, um, Flash, and um, Aquaman have been... Have been allegedly have allegedly killed by the crime syndicate, which is from uh, an, which is from a um, alternate reality from the New Fifty Two. And Nightwing, you know, he he's sworn to you know to avenge Batman because after all, Nightwing is the first Robin, as as we all know. But we'll see we'll see what happens because he's going up against Ultraman, which is the most deadliest person. In comics right now and you know Ultraman by the way is the evil doppelganger of Superman or the are the are an evil Superman from a or the polar opposite of Superman from a different reality rather all right and up next are Aquaman number numbers 24 and 25 now um, Right now on the pages of Aquaman, he's he's going up against um, going up against this this guy who um, who wants control of Atlantis, and he'll go it he'll go to all any and all links to to do so, and right now um, it's not looking good for Arthur Curry, of course that's Aquaman's uh, Earth name, and. Um, it's about to come to a head, and and from my understanding, after twenty five, it's going to continue over in the in the uh, Justice League as soon as Forever Evil wraps up. All right, now now for the Marvel books. Uh, first Marvel book up is all new X Men number nineteen. This is the first issue of the X Men with new uniforms and now currently students at the new Xavier. Um, Institute. Now you're probably wondering. Wait a minute. Weren't they um, on Wolverine's uh, side? Yeah, they were. They were members of the Jean Grey School uh, for the Gifted. But um, after the events of the um, the story arc called um, Battle of the Atom, they, along with uh, Kitty Pride, who was also who was a a headmistress at at the Jean Grey School, had decided to uh, switch sides. Oh, and by the way, these X Men can't go back to their um, to their own time, ever. So, new school, new uniforms. Let's see what happens. And up next are the last two issue last two issues of Avengers Academy. Now, let me tell you, Avengers Academy is this book where all the all the side all the sidekicks of the um, of some of the major Marvel superheroes, they've been captured by Arcade, and he's pretty much making them fight each other to the death. At I mean, to his own, to his own pleasure. And right now, and so far there have been probably I think about five or six, 
five or six of them have died. So it's going it's going to look so it's going to be very it's going to be very interesting how the how this series wraps up and who's going who who's going to live who's going to live and who else is going to die. Up next is uh, Superior Spider-Man Team Up number seven. Um, this pretty much talks about Spider-Man and his um, Superior Six. In other words, the um, his former um, his former mates in the uh, Sinister Six, which are Vulture, um, Sandman, Electro. Hmm. Vulture, Sandman, Electro, Chameleon, and Mysterio. And, I mean, sorry, I I always get them mixed up. And this time, you know, they had been under mind con they had been under my control for a while, but then at the end of number six, uh, they finally snap out of it, and this time they're they're coming after Spider Man. And by the way, who they don't know that Otto Octavius is inside Peter Parker's body. So they just so they just think that, um, this is just some kind of sick joke and and they're and they're going and they're going coming right after the superior spider-man all i gotta say is peter parker please come back or or if you're or if you're the writers of if you're dan slot please bring peter parker back this this is this, this is ridiculous although it's a good book i'll 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 give you that but th this is awful i mean spider-man has pretty much become like a member of this this it, I kind of compared the superior spider-man to this uh, this team of superheroes in the Wildstorm universe called the authority who killed people who they killed the bad guys but we will see what happens oh excuse me for a few seconds I, I um, dropped some books All right. Up next is Wolverine the X Men number thirty nine, and well, rather number thirty eight. And this is the first issue after Battle of the Atom. And Wolverine is, you know, beside himself because right now the five original X Men have gone over to Cyclops' side, and and so and so is his headmistress Kitty Pride, aka Shadow Cat or Sprite or whatever you want to call her, but I just call her Kitty Pride. Um, and the Shield is. Pretty much getting on his case, and this time he he can't take it anymore, and he's taking the fight right to Shield. Now that's not really going to look good for him, considering he's also an Avenger, and the Avengers have close ties to um, to Shield. Up next was the the book I was telling y'all about earlier, Indestructible Hulk number fifteen. Um, right now it's not looking good after the Gamma Bomb irradiated the Hulk, and now he's even more. He's even more vicious, more barbaric, more Neanderthalish than than before, and it's going to be interesting how they're going, how this is going to um, this is going to pan out, because how in the world do you stop do you stop a Hulk who's even more deadlier than before? Next up is Captain America number fourteen, and um, Cap and the Falcon. Go overseas to um, to this European country to stop uh, Nuke, aka um, Frank Simpson. Yeah, a Frank Simpson from killing more people. Because after all, Frank Simpson is um, is you know was an is a um, was used as an attempt to uh, to restore the uh, super soldier um, program. And, and it went wrong and now he's going overseas to, to kill people just because they're not American or to kill countries that have won wars against the US and it's going to be very interesting how that's going to um, how that's going to come to a head because right now it's not looking good for Cap because the because Nuke is just beating the living daylights out of him Despite the fact that he knows Captain, he despite the fact he knows Captain America's rank, he knows that, and you know he knows about Captain America, but he he thinks that, but for some reason he thinks Cap is on the wrong is on the wrong side of the law instead, 
instead of the right. Up next is and uh, and and lastly is um, Mighty Avengers number four. And as you can see, this this character right here is called Ronan, and Ronan made well his debut in the um, first New Avengers series back in back at the end of two thousand four, early two thousand five, and um, so far I think this is the third person to ever assume the identity of Ronan. The first one was. Uh, Daredevil's uh, former love interest Echo, who is who is a woman, by the way, and then the second one was was actually Hawkeye, a few years later, and as to who this um, this uh, new Ronin is, uh, I don't know, but something tells me that whoever this new Ronin is, used to be the so-called Spider Hero that showed up at the end of Number One. Okay, that's 18, everybody. So that brings the total of comics that I've bought so far to 6,030 comics. Someone has asked me again, do I blow off all my money on uh, comics? And that the answer is no. I mean, I have my own place, and I'm putting myself through college. So... That that's kind of dumb. I, I mean, I, I do man I do manage my money, and if I can't buy comics, I won't try. Um, and speaking of money, I'm going I'm going to start Christmas shopping. Of course, Christmas is 13 days from today, and uh, let me tell you something, I'm going to avoid at all cost to do last minute Christmas shopping that that is such a pain in the behind and um, and I hope y'all have done that or if you're like my mom you probably would have y'all probably would have started doing that um, after Thanksgiving all right well that's all the time I have and um, as I always say if you have any if you have any questions, just let me know whether, whether you have my phone number, whether you're friends with me on Facebook or meet me. If you have my email address or anything like that, I'll have all that on on the screen with the exception of my phone number. I don't give my phone number uh, out. Only um, certain people are supposed to have my phone number, and, and you all know who you are. Um, I want to apologize. Uh, last week, I, I realized I didn't leave all my contact information uh, out on the screen at, like I usually do um, but don't but don't worry I won't I won't make that mistake again I, I promise all right that's all the time I have and um, next week's episode will be the last episode before Christmas so you may want to tune into that because there because who knows I'm I may have um, somebody come in that I may have some awesome people come in you just never know and if you have any uh, suggestions for the show, I, as I always say, please let me know. All right, I'm Victor Nunley. I'm the Comic Hero. We'll see you next week. Till then, be safe, be blessed, be a hero.